Let me go ahead and call the order at 504. We can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag. United United States, States of America. And all right, I don't see it's public comment, so um, we offer public comment both in person and virtually uh, in our meetings, always uh, allowing in-person public comment to go first. I do not see anybody uh, that has joined us this evening, so we'll go ahead and open that up for online. Next. So you know what online. No one online. All right, so we will move forward from public comment. Next order of business is minutes. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the attack January 17, 2024 minutes? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the attack February 7, 2024 meeting? Minutes. Motion. Second. All right. Hi. 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 On to item E, correspondence received one January 12, 2024 to February 16, 2024. So we do have four pieces of correspondence that you see included in our agenda packet. Um, all of these uh, four questions are in the works as far as uh, responses back. Um, I know some of them, you know, some of the accounts like you provided some feedback on one here in particular um, that we can build into some of the comments, right? Yeah, for the uh, construction of the Yeah, and then some of it was some more specific questions that we certainly can answer, make sure we get that. So that's all in process. Um, but I also take a uh, opportunity here to always remind people to make sure they please do use the correspondence form. This is actually really nice to see that we actually did get four questions. We haven't seen as much activity, but I think people are starting to really see, you know, can see from the road and see a lot going on. So we'll probably start to see an uptick in some of these questions, which is fantastic. And we certainly encourage that for the community. Uh, the questions, comments, thoughts, right through the correspondence form, which is at the bottom of our um, webpage. You'll see it right there, very easy to submit. So that for additional information, and we'll respond as quickly as possible to your questions. So we'll right on to uh, reports. Uh, for F1 chair report, I have nothing specific this evening. So we'll go right on to town council liaison report. I don't have anything specific. All right, any questions at all, Sarah? All right, go right on to board of education liaison report. Um, I mean, I don't know how exactly relevant to this group is, but we'll just pass our, our budget and then move on to town council and then. March things really pick up the budget on both sides. Any questions for that? All right, nineteen twenty eight building committee liaison report, Chris. Yeah, um, you know, the project is moving forward. We're um, accepting the design development documents and doing uh, the uh, considering value engineering. We're moving forward to construction document development stage. Um, approve some interior design and uh, and interior finishes and we're moving forward with uh, contractual arrangements with some additional professional partners for engineering commissioning service so it's moving forward all uh, going well and our next meeting will be on march 12th great any questions for chris all right nineteen twenty nine building architect report uh, good evening, all. Uh, so uh, Susan, uh, she contacted the state uh, a couple of times. So this is regarding the remaining epiphany items. So still there's no response. So we're still waiting on that. And uh, the design team, that's SLR and uh, Richter Sigan, uh, we are kind of putting together a package. This is for the tennis court rebid, uh, the drawing specifications. And we also want to include the geotechnical report, uh, what, should, what we received from Langdon. For this package uh, so and concurrently to that we also working with sk associates so they are a lighting consultants so they they have several lighting manufacturers under their wing 
So this is, we're doing, working on the photometric calculations for the revised site plan because of the 1928 building. What is a foot candle on the on the walkways at the tennis courts? So we are evaluating that. What is so in case, I mean, so we get a final layout for the light pictures. So that is happening. Um, so that's all I have. And um, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So we'll move right on to construction manager report. Uh, later in the meeting, uh, we'll uh, review the, the payment application uh, approval. Uh, and also the PCOs. As far as the high school working with TSKP on RFIs and winding, winding the submittal process, especially for area F. Construction overall, high school 69%, uh, site work 50%, site work contractor will be remobilizing on, uh, on or about March 11th, uh, starting uh, restarting the, the site work and commissioning roughly around 27%. Our CM contingency on the high school portion is uh, still at three million uh, sixty-four thousand and change, about ninety-two percent of funds available. And on the central office portion, has not been touched. Uh, we have eighty-two thousand three seventy-five, so one hundred percent of those funds are still available. Overall, uh, I'm not going to go into the uh, specific detail that's in the CM report, but interior CME uh, ground face CME was complete. Millwork doors, hardware, and A and B are progressing. Glass installation uh, is wrapping up. Uh, it will wrap up mid uh, March on the south elevation. Kitchen hoods are installed. Smoke tested. Walk-ins or walk-in coolers are progressing. The rooftop units will be arriving on March seventh and March eighth. Uh, they'll be set with two separate crane picks. The power feeders within the building are being pulled. Uh, we're already starting to receive switch gear, uh, which is good. Auditorium scaffolding, we're gonna go into the second phase of bring it down to a mid-level and start uh, the perimeter walls. Site work, as I mentioned, restart in March, working with our CADIS uh, uh, pre-planning management, uh, identifying those in our schedule and also the punch, list punch listing process. We're uh, starting the above ceiling um next week and getting the engineer of record tskp everybody to go through that process and uh, <clears throat> having check off lists the floors um flooring's actually started today uh on the third floor classrooms with the floor prep floor physical uh, linoleum is not in place yet but that's going to go quickly area f central office um uh, just planning for summer work uh, trying to get the Teachers out, no more snow days. Um, yeah. and, uh, for the powers that be, um, hopefully we'll get uh, <laughs> we'll get a, a good spring. But um, 1928 project, we're just finalizing the grading changes with uh, TSKP and the, the project team as well. Tennis court rebid, Laurel Purcell, who's our pre-construction manager, she's gonna be putting it out to rebid. Uh, she's preparing uh, that for March. We're continuing our weekly, bi-weekly tours um, at uh, town council chair uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, we had the custodial staff yesterday. We have bi-weekly, um, won't be this Friday, but bi-weekly is on Friday at 2.30 for anybody that wants to show up, as long as we know ahead of time so that we can uh, plan the tour. Um, March 4th, as far as OMG builds, uh, Coloronan graciously will uh, be working uh, on hosting an engineering session. Um, and I just, as far as one of the correspondents, I just wanted to touch upon, you know, as far as uh, getting kids interested in construction, as far as um, on our webpage, you, you sort of, I'm trying to have them put this on our main landing, our main page, but if you go into our construction academy, it's uh, getting kids uh, at, the elementary school, middle school, and uh, high school level. There's, it's very interactive. You take quizzes, you see videos. Um, it basically gets kids to uh, start thinking about these careers um, at the appropriate time. Um, it goes through their math skills and what they have to do to get into the, either the trades or college, uh, college-related careers. Um, it's 
there's a wealth of information. I actually, I shared it with Wes Woods today. I'll be um, sharing it with uh, the high school team and also IER. Um, you can spend hours on, on our website, but that dovetails with LNG and specifically it's geared towards women. Uh, we're trying to get more women interested in construction and um, there's, again, I'm not going to go through all the details, but uh, on your free time, it is geared towards educators and students that are interested in construction. So we're going to be pushing more of this. We're still going to be holding our ONG builds uh, sessions once a month. But this, for what we don't touch upon, kids can do some research and explains what you have to do to get into college or what you have to do to get into technical schools. Scholarships that are available. So it's something that we do. We're just rolling out right now. And it's um, that's uh, on the ONG builds. And if there's any other questions. It's great. I'm going to go take a look. It's, I don't even know all the details. Yeah, it literally just got rolled out. Uh, it was just rolled out. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a few weeks ago, but they they shared it with the project teams. Hey, this is they've been working on this for quite a while. It's got uh, union and non-union uh, careers, skilled trades, and college college-bound careers. If you want to go into engineering or construction management. Okay, great research. Sounds like a lot of questions. Nelson, what did you say for the open tours or the just the running regularly running tours that you're? So if I want to be clear, it's tours yeah. for it's not public tours, so right. it's only right. building committee members or school okay. facility. It's uh, every other Friday at two thirty. Um, we don't have one this Friday. We we have them. What's the following Friday? It's uh, first or, um, some, we hold them most of the time unless Russ says he doesn't have anybody available. Uh, a few weeks ago, we have the special ed department come okay. through. So what we try to do is we focus on what that department is going to see right. or whatever other areas that they want to see. Okay. But to tour the whole building, usually within half hour, 45 minutes, depending on how many questions come. Okay. I know the board is looking for a yeah, you right. new board members, and then it's been a while. For so the board, we try to, we've had the meetings out there. Yeah. You just, yeah. well, you don't want to have too many board members at one time. So, but one here or there. With, yeah. I think, well, um, that's one thing actually that I was thinking about is that I think it's time for us to go back out as a committee. Uh, so I think you're talking about what are the head stuff mm -hmm. that we can yeah. kind of coordinate there. I think we can schedule yeah. something with you. Yeah, like we, we've done in the past. We've yeah, we 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 go out there in the, the, the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to. You don't want to get a forum. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we have to, we have to sit them down. But I think we're. It's been a number of months since we've been out right. there, and it's really taking shape. So it'd be it'd be good to get back out. Now there. is the time that it's the exciting phase. It's the right. ground phase CMU. Everything is now looking the way non-construction people would recognize the space. Like a real like a classroom, yeah. like a gymnasium. You know? yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Wendy, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to um, say, Nelson, I know I'm bringing the Farmington High School class of 1998 through on March 2nd, so I don't want you to forget that. It's in my calendar since last year. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, I think we might have some space because I know you put a number on it and we don't have as many interests. So I didn't know if, like, you wanted to open up some of those spots. But we can talk offline. Yeah. I, yeah. As long as the group is around 20 ish, we don't want to know larger than that because yeah, construction is still taking place at 2 30. So we, we just got to keep the group. Um, to a, you know, roughly that, give or take few people. And we'll make sure to give you guys a which meeting is scheduled so that we can just adjust your understanding as well. So it took a little bit longer. No, no, all right. <laughs> Any other questions? No, okay. I like that type of women of asphalt, like a whole title. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we will go right to project manager report, Russ. Uh, but again, going into the detail in the next section, next part of the agenda, we had 11 COs that we approved at the decision making group. Uh, we had a meeting with our builder's risk agent for our insurance. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Uh, it was Nelson, Mason, uh, myself, and uh, Jay Emanuel, their uh, ONG safety manager. Uh, we walk, he walked through. The building went through a handful of things and dotted the I's, crossed the T's, so we can make sure that we're doing everything up to stuff. And as far as as far as our builders' risk insurance is required, uh, everything was really good. Um, we had a, about a two and a half hour meeting with them, and it went well. But he came back with a couple of recommendations, and things are going to change up a little bit on site. But nothing critical came out of it. Which is a really informative meeting. So that was about the only other thing out of the ordinary that we had all that. Ms. Watson, we'll get more into some of the financial stuff a little later on. Any other questions? All right, we'll go right on to owner's rep with manager report. Welcome, happy to have you. We'll get your name back, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're part of the team, you definitely are. Thank you. Yeah. Um, start out with the financial portion. Uh, Emily has received the um, documents from the town. Uh, she is in the middle of sorting them as well as printing them and getting those prepared for audit. Uh, in terms of move management, Tom has had the uh, meetings with faculty and staff uh, to review the plan and uh, instructions. He is also underway of uh, getting pricing on um, some of the uh, packing materials and things like that, which will be needed shortly. And as far as the construction goes, I've been on site uh, numerous times, uh, reviewing above ceilings um, and getting prepared for uh, next week for the uh, official above ceiling uh, inspections. Uh, I did come across a couple of uh, items and brought those to ONG's attention as uh, to get those ahead of uh, the inspections so we don't have any major issues and uh as well as walking the rest of the site just looking on progress and things like that and uh, i'm in the middle of uh reviewing their recent schedule update i did see a couple of uh, uh things that didn't settle uh well with me so i did bring those up to ong and they are going to make some corrections in their next update and i am still Progressing through that, and we'll talk with OMG if I find anything else. Um, right now, uh, I, you know, it's looking good, but you know, it's, we don't uh, have the proper manpower. I mean, we're going to say you know, it, it's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. But, um, you're saying from the schedule perspective. Correct. We, we don't, yeah. Yeah, that's we're just, we're doing the yeah and that's what we're working for. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. All right. Okay. Any other questions for Chris or Al? Okay. All right. We'll go right on to communications subcommittee report. Um, nothing to report. We canceled. We canceled, but you should have received the newsletter if your mailbox feed that went out. It all went signing to residents. I have to speak to the post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never received it. Can <laughs> you get on it now? I got mine. I, I got definitely got mine. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, we canceled because, you know, we, after that going out, we didn't need an immediate update, but I think we're going to be gearing up towards, you know, Ribbon cutting and tours and all that is gonna it's gonna be here before we know it. So remember, we're always looking for planners, volunteers for that work. If you're interested in that stuff, I know Wendy will jump in to help <laughs> us on ribbon cutting. See, she's very anxious and excited. No, <laughs> we're always looking for help and support on those things because they're always bigger than you think. And then we get in the middle of all that. So. And I believe we were told we had the best talking off ceremony. Ever. We've ever seen so <laughs> far as now, yeah. Yeah, the other bar, yeah, yeah far exactly. We can't, can't deviate from that. That's um, all right. Any questions or thoughts on communications? No, 
Uh, right. Um, professional partner subcommittee report, there's uh, nothing to report there. We've got to um, pull that committee together. There's no need uh, anytime recently, but certainly we'll, we'll provide a report when that does occur and we think it's required. Uh, financial subcommittee report, uh, we obviously get a lot of the detail when we move on farther with the agenda as far as uh, approvals of uh, the input packages as well as the change orders. Uh, but we did obviously add our screen last Friday. Um, and then in front of you as well, you also have uh, the contingency snapshot. So this is the report that you guys should be familiar with that we've started to pass up for the this. this uh, which is kind of a really nice overview that gives us that top box really good as it does, a nice snapshot of where we stand. Um, on contingency overall, I don't know if there's any other detail between Russia Cat or do you want to you want to point out on this for the committee? Uh, just that we're, we're still in good shape, yeah. very good shape financially uh, for a project this size, and we have a million dollars, plus than a million dollars at the change orders. We're doing very well. I think that goes enough to the enough side right there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or thoughts on that? Oh. Right. So we go right to financial report. Um, we just have to prepare the report for next time, but the only update will be um, there's a an invoice in here to yeah. be approved for IRA, which is separate uh, from our normal invoice package that will be reflected once approved. Yeah. The and nothing else in addition that yeah. charge that. Okay. All right. So we're going to move right on to new business then. Um, first order of business is G1. Uh, so could I have a motion to approve the attached amended rules of procedure for the Farmington High School building? Okay. All right. We will open this up for discussion, but Kathy, you want to kind of walk us? Sure. Um, so this is really just a formality. Um, there's been some changes recently to the makeup of the committee, some shifting around after the municipal election in November. Um, with that, there was a Board of Education vacancy. Beth, last night at the town council meeting, was moved from a non-voting member to a voting member. Um, but the big change actually took place last December when then Johnny was added as a resident. So now we have eight voting members and we used to have seven voting members. So that's kind of changed the overall makeup of the committee, and therefore the formality is to update the rules of procedure because it listed out number of voting members and total number of members uh, for the quorum. So it's just a change in that from seven voting members and a four-person quorum to eight voting members and a five-person quorum. Um, while we were changing it, we also updated just some, like, housekeeping item. Um, I originally was listed as the clerk. We have since brought Devin on, even though it's been four years. <laughs> we have been it also previously said that a conference call was an acceptable form of attendance for committee members. We now know there's technology like Zoom. So that has just been updated to, to bring us current. Um, and in 2024. So those are the changes in here. Any questions on that? Makes sense, right? I think one of the our goals from the committee perspective, I think we've seen a lot of value in our continuity of membership and we've seen a huge value to that. So I think that's one of the reasons why we can really been doing what we can to maintain when it's possible. And this was an opportunity for us to uh, play that role, which was awesome. We appreciate that. That was huge. making the change for us. Honor the serve them. Yeah, it really is. See, another one you can't get rid of us for because they're long, it's possible. Years, remember when we say how many years we still have left together? Um, all right, so any other questions or thoughts on this? There's been a lot of shuffling over the, yeah, the yeah. years, but the we kind of remained the same. You know, Chris was on town council, we moved into a resident, Sarah was board of ed, you moved to town council, Beth was, you know, 
shifted around. Johnny was town council, resident, then town council, and now resident. So that's we did. That's we're we're yeah. keeping up the, the same core group yeah, for the core base. <clears throat> all right. Uh, if there's no other questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Item G2, could I have a motion to approve the following invoice package? Motion. All right, we will open this up for discussion. How long have you been on it for? Um, the invoices and then go into the change orders. Um, first invoice is TSKP Studio. This is for their services rendered through January 31st. It also is just some work on one of the amendments um, that we had, we had approved at this committee. So it's a total of 45,800, pretty straightforward the typical invoice for TSKP. Um, next one that we have is ONG Industries. Um, this is in the amount of $4,358,752.16. And I will have Nelson do the highlights. So the our places every month is they're reviewed in detail with uh, uh, the professional partners meeting, and then uh, follow uh, the following sub finance committee meeting. So the pencil copies for this month were at four million seven seventy four four sixty and ninety five cents. Uh, the payment applications were adjusted down by four hundred fifteen thousand seven hundred eight and seventy nine. So the final approved, reviewed and approved uh, payment applications. Are four million three fifty eight seven fifty two and sixteen cents, and we recommend approval. Just another reminder: I say this every time, but obviously everything has been reviewed many times. So we haven't got here, but up certainly from a committee perspective, this final review on Friday um, and evaluation that we we see included in it. All right. Next two invoices are for IMTL. This is our materials testing. Um, these are sent to ONG to verify sign-in sheets, make sure they were there on the date they say they were. The reports have been received and reviewed. Um, so ONG has signed off on both of these invoices and recommend uh, for approval. Questions? Next, we have um, two invoices for IES. This is our commissioning agent. Again, these are sent to um, ONG to review for and verify site inspection, progress meetings, reports, um, and both of these invoices were reviewed and recommended for approval. <laughs> Questions? All right, we'll go right to the next one. All right, the next one is project manager. These are Russet invoices for January. Um, also attached are the weekly timesheets that, that track um, the amount of hours spent on the project. Um, so this is in the amount of $6,514.29. Questions? All right, the next one is Arcadis. Um, this is for their services rendered through January 31st, um, $1,140. Again, we brought them on board in January. I think it was, you know, the work that had been performed to date. So um, moving forward, we'll see them on, on every invoice or on every agenda with their invoices. Questions? All right, we're right down to uh, page orders. All right, I'll call out the change order if someone wants to <laughs> give a brief summary. Um, first one we have is PCO 63. PCO 63 is a kind of a culmination of uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment and layouts based upon uh, what the final requests were for furniture in the classrooms. And it resulted in changes to the data drops and hours and supplies for the workstation within the classroom. Uh, it took quite a while to go through this because you can see it's a pretty large sum. Uh, it covers a lot of classrooms. There's, we, we beat up the, sub, the consultant, and, uh, I'm sorry, the subcontractor, 
and over uh, this is the final result of that those changes based on our furniture pictures. Any questions on that? Right. All right. Next, we have PCO seventy one. So this is a net zero cost of the contract. We we added in the washer and dryer. Just added the stands in. Took away a curtain that would cover it up and it to meet ADA requirements, and it ended up being net zero cost of the contract. You're like zero. Yeah, definitely. I don't think it's zero. Yeah, net zero. I think it works for everybody. <laughs> um, PCO 75 is also the same situation. Uh, another net zero change to the contract. This is for some minor grading uh, at area, area A and B outside to make sure that the grade is low enough so nobody uh, hits their head on the uh, sunshades I know, for the windows. Just to be Slight adjustment to the grade. All right, PCO 76. This is a, another good one for the contract. It's a, it's a deduction. Uh, as part of our details for the town, we, we don't use a lot of expansion joints. We have concrete with the, next to Jason with the granite curving. So we deleted the expansion material. At the, those locations, which resulted in a uh, net credit of ten thousand five hundred thirty-five dollars. Next, we have PCO ninety-one. This is uh, between two classrooms. The flooring uh, where the elevation changes, and there was uh, a miss in the plans cover the floor for a fire rating between the wall, between those two uh, rooms. And overall, it was a $2,400 increase to go in and build that floor to make sure that fire rating. All right, PCO 92. This is uh, on a transom window for the two classrooms. Basically, the transom and the plans extended five years longer than the, belt, the room itself. So they modified the existing transom and a uh, hollow metal door frame to accommodate the width of the classroom for $740 for the modification to the transom and the hollow metal frame. PCO 97. This one gets a little more intricate. It is for stair three, the structural steel uh, where it goes up and meets the top floor, you need to upgrade the uh, structural steel element that would hold the stairs after it was been reviewed and find out it had to meet code so it wouldn't and eliminate a lot of bounce, make sure it was stiff enough, and the size had to be increased. And this is for the cost of the material increase because they had to do, they already had to do steel members in there for the stairs, but at least had to be up. This is going to be coming out of the orange conditions. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Sorry. Next, we have PCO 99. So this is for the kiln that's going to come over from the existing high school and with the existing uh, ventilation system in the, built in the room, we didn't need to add any extra ventilation for the kiln. Be taken care of within the existing uh, ventilation system that's already in the building. So it's a net credit of $2,600. Next, we have PCO 100. This is to add baffles at the, the sprinklers where they meet the windows. Uh, as a result, um, we had the uh, PCO 17, we eliminated the fire shutters. This is a uh, an ad because of that deletion. We saved over eighty thousand dollars with those fire shutter savings on the, that PCO 17. This is to make sure we still meet the fire code, and we need to put these baffles up a lot. That was windows where the uh, sprinklers come down. So overall, it's a seventy-five thousand dollar change of savings that we had for the contract with this. PCL, PCL, the 47 
PTO 101. We had to, uh, this is the result of the rack, equipment rack in the closet. We had to delete the ceiling in order to fit the rack that was chosen. And it includes the credit for the drop ceiling, but also by dropping, take, removing that ceiling, we had to fireproof and change wiring around to make sure it was all deleted. And this is the result of that for $6,940. And the last one we have is PCO 105. Well, basically, the whole high school has the electronic card readers at every door. And for some reason, the uh, weight room was missed or chosen not to be included. Uh, talking with Matt and Scott and Sam, we all, everyone felt that it was required to make sure that we had and know who's enter entering and exiting the weight room. So, this is an additional $3,600. Project. It'll, be, it'll be consistent throughout the school. Any questions on anything? Everybody online, okay? I, I have one question about the um, the kiln and the vent. Are <clears throat> If I'm if I'm interpreting that one correctly, what we're saying is that there's an existing ventilation system that would handle the heat that's coming off of that kiln because there's there's an exhaust that's you know for whatever sort of smells or something like that. But are are we comfortable that based upon the specs of that particular piece of equipment that there's an exhaust to withdraw the extreme temperatures in that space? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes. <clears throat> right, and then just quickly, I also do want to extend uh, thank you to the committee for all the work you guys can see at the bottom of the page, all the people that go through and approve and review each one of these page orders. So it, it really does make a difference in the level of what we see in front of us. It's, it's something I think that's, that's impressive. So thank you to the, the work effort that goes into, and you've heard Russ mention that, you know, we see a dollar amount in front of us, but we don't realize that was a $75,000 savings <laughs> uh, that potentially could have made it way to us if we didn't do the due diligence. So thank you for, the, for all that additional work that's happening behind the scenes. All right, so we will go ahead and move on to. Oh, we did, did we go? Yep. Yes, sorry. <laughs> 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 no, we're right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and go. Strange position. I know. Just recently, right? <laughs> You're usually the one telling me. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, All right, so we're going to go right on to item G3. Uh, so can I get a motion to approve an invoice for Call Timbers Marketing LLC in the amount of $4,600? Motion. Second. All right, uh, just quickly in discussion, Kat mentioned this previously. So this is the invoice for the winter 2024 newsletter prepared by Call Timbers. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, okay, item four, uh, could I have a motion to author authorize our cages to obtain a proposal from William B. Meyer, Inc. for MOVE Services with an attempt to award off-state contract 14PSX0161. Motion. Second. All right, we will open this up for discussion. So we're, we're going to have to contract with a moving company to perform the physical move of the materials from this building to the new building. Um, we are able to award off the state contract, which would expedite the timeline significantly because if you would have to otherwise go through a full RFP process and our process goes through multiple committees and reviews and it, 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 it takes a significantly longer time. Um, both the town and Arcadence have had positive experiences with the proposed vendor here. 
um, approval of this motion would authorize Arcadis to receive a proposal from William Meyer, and it's anticipated that that would then come back to the building committee for approval with the dollar value so that we would be able to move forward. Everybody clear on that? We're not approving a go ahead officially until we understand cost and everything that comes back. We got to put the, the process. Do they know that they are the only one getting the? There are other people that are on the state contract, but I believe that based on the experience, I don't know. I mean, would they William know they are the only one getting, or do they know it's? Okay? Oh, I I'm not. I don't know. I I think the way they will price it will be so when you look at their state contract, they'll have prices per box, per manager, per mover, per oh. driver, all those sort <laughs> yeah. of things. So they're gonna oh. they're, they're gonna look at the scope and they're gonna basically insert those prices that they have from the state contract into the number of hours that they think it's gonna take to do it. Oh. Um so we'll have that assumption of cost and then as the work is done. Um, Tom Beatty and, and William Meyer will be tracking how much time how and material they're using to be able to do it, and we'll be invoiced for exactly how much. That so the is. P time skew level of hmm? price times quantity. Yeah, okay. exactly. That yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on that? All right, all in favor. Hi. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, so we have other business. Anything else? I don't believe so. Any other thoughts, questions before we adjourn for this evening? All right. So can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion. Second. Justin. Peter. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.